Let me ask you about uh, Asa Elrip, uh, and I'm, I'm curious about an, an aspect of this. She's not gotten divorced from him yet. She's doing the documentary, saying she wants to, to see what he has to say in court. Is there a reason she has not divorced him yet? And that reason, not necessarily being that she believes he's innocent, but because if she were not married to him, she may have to testify that with the spousal privilege law. Um, if that kind of stays in place until the trials are over and such, she doesn't have to do any of that. Um, but if she were to, uh, that, that would be interesting. There would probably have to be, I don't know, depending on what her involvement was or knowledge was, some sort of a plea deal involved of, like, you testify, we're not going to go after you. But if she's married, um, does that sort of thing apply where they would need a you know, where she wouldn't have to, to go down to that route of a plea deal of knowing the, of having knowledge if she did of any of these crimes. Yeah, you know, I think Asa is not staying with this alleged serial killer because she's a hopeless romantic or something <laughs> like that. Uh, I think, like you said, I think there are other considerations at play, but perhaps the chief of which is um, that spousal privilege issue. Uh, typically, in, in many states, uh, if the couple is married, the wife wouldn't have to testify under oath against mm -hmm. um, her husband, Rex Hureman. Now, there are some exceptions to that. Uh, most states have exceptions uh, called like forfeiture by wrongdoing. Such that if Asa had some kind of nefarious involvement, she might forfeit that privilege. And I'm sure that prosecutors are at least exploring um, that, that avenue currently. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that for a second, because uh, there's involvement and there's knowledge. Um, if she was involved in this, if she's, you know, getting the burlap, I'm just theoretically saying here, and I'm not saying she did this, but just for the argument, she's getting the burlap sacks and putting them on these victims' heads. I mean, I'm saying that because they found some of her hairs on the sacks, so it's not, I guess, that far of a stretch. Uh, but then there's the other scenario where she's just locked in the bedroom where she's going on vacation and Rex is out doing this shit, and she's either aware... Uh, there's two scenarios there, too. This spider's off. She's either aware that he's killing people and <laughs> doing this, or she's aware that he's out having sex with sex workers. Um where does that that kind of fall into responsibility? Obviously, if she's participating in the crime and they had evidence of that, she could easily be charged. But the other two scenarios, I think, are more what what is what is the gray area for a lot of us of, okay, knowledge of being a shitty human being and going and cheating on your wife with sex workers, you know, versus having knowledge of him. Well, I, I think he might be killing these sex workers or or knowing that he's killing these sex workers. Yeah, that, that's a, kind of a sticky issue in the law because um, historically, usually just having knowledge of some wrongdoing doesn't necessarily expose someone to criminal liability. However, um, you know, if, if you know that your husband is likely to kill other sex workers because he's done it in the past and you say nothing and, and you could have prevented future murders and you did it, does that begin to look like obstruction? Does no. that begin to look like um, some sort of kind of involuntary homicide theory like we've seen in some of these school shooting cases where the parents knew something horrible was going to happen. They did not take appropriate measures to try and prevent it. Could such a theory apply to the wife in this scenario? I think it's possible. And that, yeah, that's the interesting one. And uh, are, are they sitting back? Cause obviously she's been charged with nothing. She's innocent. Um, I I as far as we know, um, I I what are they doing right now? As far as investigating or as far as I I'm aware, not a whole lot is, but are they, are they just kind of still sitting back waiting and watching and like you do your thing, Asa, and, and we'll just sit back. And if something, you know, Robert Durstish comes up, then we're going to swoop in. <laughs> yeah, uh, th that would be a crazy development. Um, but I, I think that there's probably even more surveillance than that. I, I think they're really watching her moves. I'm sure they're talking to everyone they know that she's talked to, people close in her lives. Does she if she's made any statements mm -hmm. about having this kind of knowledge about what she knew about, God forbid, any involvement she may or may not have had? We don't know yet. Um, but uh, but I got to imagine prosecutors aren't just sitting on their hands. They're probably covertly exploring any investigative avenues they can with respect to this entire family. Hey, it's Tony Bruschi. If you like the podcast, be sure to like, subscribe, and press that bell so you don't miss any of our updates on the cases we're following for you right here at the Hidden Killers podcast and True Crime Today. And thanks.